Okay. Uh, good afternoon. Um, had a good day today. You know, obviously a fast Friday for us, red zone day. We start the day with our position meetings and, uh, and then we have a team meeting um, um, also during that time. And uh, we talk about situations, you know, so we spend about 15 minutes, go, through, go around the league and talk about different situations. Say we talked about certain team had a four minute situation, how they handled that really well. They did a nice job of, you know, Work on the clock, and you know, and then on defense, what would you do? And then we, you know, look at different two-minute situations, in the game situations. Um, it's usually about 30 plays or so. Uh, talk about you know fourth down tries, you know, uh, replay reviews, um, inbounds, out of bounds, all those things that come around in the league, and what we can do to help our football team be a smart football team. You know, and keep educating um, not only uh, the players but the coaches and everybody that's in in the building. So I think that's a really good uh, meeting. We've been doing that the entire year, so I think that's been really good for us uh, is our in growing in situational football and being smart. Um, today we had our gold zone and red zone today, so, so we're making improvements in that area, and that's a big day for us. And I told the guys the emphasis for us is really to be good in situations and how we're going to be good in there is if we study. You know, we got 48 hours before the game. we got to study our situations. You know, that would be going back to yesterday, third down, and doing the red zone, gold zone today, making sure we know the plays, make sure we know the calls, and how we're going to execute those calls for the game. So that's an important part for our success. Uh, again, excited about the competition we have uh, this Sunday uh, back at Soldier Field. We're, we're certainly excited about that with uh, having our fans there. Uh, they've been excellent all year, and we're excited about having uh, doing that in front of those guys. So I'll open up to questions from there. What you think it's like for some of the guys you've played the last couple of weeks when they watch Justin take off? I mean, I don't know if you've been in a situation where you, everything you call is right and the quarterback's gone. I'm curious what you think, what, what your sense of what that's like for them. Yeah, you know, you just got to set your, you try to set up the best you can. You know, um, you know, playing you know, over the years, I've played, you know, Pat and, you know, Josh and those guys and, and uh, Lamar and, and different guys. And you had, Sometimes you have some success against them and sometimes you don't. You know, those guys really are game changers. And that's what makes our game great, you know. Uh, and that's what makes it great to watch. It's great to be a fan, great to be a part of as a coach, as those special special athletes at the QB position. And uh, they're special, there's no doubt about it. And it's hard. It's difficult. You know, you got to do a lot of different things. Uh, we need to create and get more weapons around that quarterback, whoever that quarterback may be, um, you know, receiver, tight end, and the matchup issues, and you have the quarterback that can do the various things that those guys that I just mentioned, you know, and, and also Justin can do, um, it, it creates a problem. Yeah, so, you know, when you get across midfield, you know, you have the, the, there's, a, there's a zone there where, you know, hey, you're going to potentially go for it. You could, you could punt and pin. Or you can kick, you know, and that's that's a big part of it. And obviously, that changes with wind and you know conditions and all that. And uh, but when you certainly get to that kick line, you feel real confident, you know, whatever that kick line may be. And uh, when you get a guy like Cairo, man, it helps you, it helps you make good decisions, and helps you have you know, stay ahead of the of the game a little bit. You guys been for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, it's a, it's a sense of confidence, you know, with Adam, you know, obviously he's a, he's a Hall of Fame kicker and, you know, he's just a, a great human being. But just having the attitude of, you know, we're going to we're going to make the kick and we're going to be, you know, successful once we get into that into that zone, it certainly fosters confidence for the whole group. The, the, the league acknowledged the errors uh, and the, on the calls, the, 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 the Claypool non-call and I think the Eddie Jackson uh, DPI. Um, you turn those in for a reason, obviously, but does that do anything for you when they at least acknowledge the, the error? Does that? Yeah, no, it's really with, with like any call. Like, you know, if you turn in a call that you think that you, that you may disagree with or that you do agree with, it's really about education. You know, it's really about educating us, you know, for the mm -hmm. rules and then, then turning that and educating the players and say, hey, that, yeah, we did play it the right way and, or you could do something better uh, going forward because those plays are over. You know, they, they made those calls, and once, once they make them, there's nothing you can do about it. You can complain and whine about it, but um, there's, there's really, that doesn't do any good. We want to learn from the situation, and that's why we turn the calls in. So good or bad, we agree with a lot of calls. We, you know, hate want explanations and then get it back to our players and educate. Do you find that you're more diplomatic about it as a head coach than, or as a coach than when you were a player or not, you know? 
Um, is the difference, is the difference from perspective different when you? Well, I just know that the, that that everybody on the field is trying to do a good job. You know, they're trying to process everything at the same time, and, and people make mistakes, and uh, you know, it, that's the way it is. And I know that once those things are, are are made and those calls are made, there's really nothing at that point that can change change that. Now, if we have a challenge flag and it's a challengeable play, uh, we certainly would do that. But uh, you know, inside two minutes or in those types of those types of fouls that we that were there, you, you can't. You know, it's, they are what they are. So if those two plays in particular, and they come back and the league says we got it wrong, is there anything you can learn from it, or is it just like, hey, they got it wrong? We move no, on. I think you can. I think you can. Like you know, with Eddie, say, hey, that, you played that the right way. You know, you did a nice job. You turned. You played the ball, and there was you know incidental contact. You both have you know uh, you know obviously are there to play the ball, and you both have a right to play the ball. So. I think that uh, it was good on that part, you know. And then the other one, there's not, not much you can do on that one. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to comment about injury, uh, but you, you guys saw the report, and we'll see where they're at from there. Jalen and can go. Who are you looking at at, at corner? Because I know we've seen Jalen Jones in there, but if both of those guys can't go. Would you be yeah, I mean it's the guys you saw in the game, right? There's, there's, there's Jalen's been in there, uh, you know, Lamar's been in there. You know, we'll see where it goes. Uh, ho hopefully, those guys are good to go. Can't go. Who do you need to kind of step up to avoid a guy? Yeah, we're still working through that. We're still working through that. We, we, we we're hoping that he would go today, you know, but we'll see where it goes from there. And again, we're going to give him time to to be able to process and and get through and hopefully treat, and we'll see where it goes from there. Uh, we'll see where it goes. We'll see where it goes. The only thing that uh, has done well is protect off. I think they've only given up 12 to 13 sacks. What do you see about their protection scheme as you try to get home against those guys? I know they have a lot of pedigree in terms of first round picks, high draft picks on their O line. Yeah, yeah, the O line's done a good job. You know, it's the strength of their team. You know, along, you know, they have a couple of good strengths there, but one of them is their offensive line and the experience they have there. Um, and, uh, you know, I think Jarrett does a good job of getting rid of it. You know, sometimes the quarterback does a nice job. He's got a lot of experience. He knows when things break down to get rid of it and not take the sack. So I think he's done a good job with that. I think it's a combination of both a, a good offensive line and also the experience of the quarterback. First normal week for Chase with you guys. What have you seen from him in practice this week? Is he getting more comfortable? Yeah, he's getting more comfortable. Uh, we're running, uh, we're expanding the package uh, for him. He's doing a lot of different things for us in there, different spots, different locations. Uh, so I think it's uh, it's healthy. It's 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 growing at the right pace, and uh, we're excited to see where it's going to go. You learned anything more about him now that you've had him another week with him? Uh, just smart. Just I don't I don't would say more. I just found out that you know he is he is super smart and understands the offense and he's getting a better feel now it's just about getting the feel and experience with the other players you know how do you play off you know the quarterback how do I play off the tight ends you know the route running and the combinations I think that that's just experience and time will help them with that yeah, no matter what the circumstance you never want to be three and six but frankly seeing three and six teams the, the mood of your team is good you it just in that locker room it seems like they are in a good place do you notice that? I mean, is that does that mean anything to you that, um, you know, the, you know, their mood, the, you know, the, 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 their state of mind, whatever, even in a in a three six season? Yeah, I just think that's the culture. You know, you create culture from the beginning um, and the mindset of getting better um, and to look at one performance at a time. And there's going to be a time when we're when we got this thing, you know, where it's the other way around, and uh, it's you know we're going to have to deal with other things, you know. So right now we're dealing with the, with adversity, and that's part of being a man, it's part of being a pro, it's part of being an organization, and those guys do a really good job of that, and that's been our message all along: stay with the process, get better, learn from performance, good, bad, or indifferent. We're going to learn, and we're going to get better, and uh, I always told them that morale starts with the individual. It's about your attitude and your mindset. And how we do that collectively is is the total team morale, and the guys have been a great uh, at doing that, and they and they put the work in the practice. This week right here that we just had was an excellent week of practice, and we're excited about the competition this Sunday. They are wired. I mean, you wire them to see each game. Just just look at the next game and stuff like that. But is it important? Is that kind of what you're saying to see the big picture and see the direction of where you're going, even if you're not winning as many games as, as you'd like? Yeah, I mean, you certainly have that. Uh, you know, we call it, you know, the microscope. You know, we're you know a telescope. You know, kind of concept. You know, right now we got to focus on our job, but certainly you want to see, you know, you know where our organization is going and it's going in the right direction. And the guys are positive. They can see that we're building, you know, a football team that we're all going to be proud of. 
how does the establishment of health now help you deal with the pitfalls that come with success? Yeah, I just think, you know, I know this is a coaching, you know, cliche, but this we've said this all along, that foundation is important. You know, that what we stand on is very important because that depends on how, you know, how high you're going to go is the foundational floor, and that's really for us is the core pieces that we have um, on offense, defense, you know, and obviously we're going to, you know, as time goes, we'll add, add more guys and all those types of things, but really it's about our philosophy. It's about us playing hard, right? It's about us being smart, and it's about us taking care of the ball and us doing a good job of doing that, playing complimentary football, offense, defense, kicking. It's a football team, not just one side or the other. It's a football team we're building. So, Halfway through the season, how, how have you seen Dominique Robinson Half of the yeah, he's he's done really good. You know, we're excited where he is. Um, you know, he's he's uh, really practiced well, and he's he's uh, you know expecting to make more splash plays. You know, more plays that are meaningful, impactful plays, more tackles, more QB pressures, and uh, we expect that out of him going forward.